Hey boys and girls, I'm standing next to the Genesis GV60. Um, I'm starting to think that maybe the 60 stands for mm, the starting price, like 60 grand. Um, this, uh, this is actually quite a nice car. Um, I think that the color is something that maybe um, a high school uh, lady might want to have for a prom dress. It's not my favorite color, but I do like the aggressive look of the of the product. This is this is what they call an angry car. Um, angry cars, happy cars, and uh, hmm, non-committal cars. This uh, this is a. I drove this home last night. Um, it's quick. It's uh, accurate. It really has a lot of things going for it. This is certainly. Um, a big step as far as I'm concerned for Genesis. And I like to just kind of like walk around and tell you what I think and what I saw. So first off, um, the gaps on this car are all pretty much the same and they're rather large. Um, you can see I can get my fingernail or actually half my finger in here. So this is running around a four or five inch, a four or five uh, millimeter gap. And then if I go to the front, you'll see that all these are about the same. So the consistency of the gaps is kind of important. That's what you really want to look for. It's not how big or small they are, is it, is it that they're all consistent? And in this case, yes, they are. What I really enjoyed was the seats. Actually, you know, I'm gonna do the back one first. This is a car that I believe, um, I believe that um, Tesla should benchmark. This thing, this back seat is uber comfortable. So this is like folding the seat down, but, but it has um, that position, that position, and that position. So you have three different positions that you can do something with in the back seat. My guess is that this is probably for a baby seat, so if, or a child seat. This is kind of um, a good thing because that gets rid of the gap between the seat, the real seat and the, uh, and the child seat. It's a very aggressive uh, kind of a fit, but Tesla should benchmark. Th these are really comfortable, really comfortable in comparison to the, to the re seat, rear seats that I've had in most of the electric vehicles. I really like this. The way that, uh, the way that everybody's uh, working it right now is uh, a little different than what I really would like. Um, the Genesis has something good, which is when you get in, it's relatively comfort comfortable. I hate the push button. I absolutely loathe it. Um, <laughs> where's the key? So the car is, like I say, these seats are comfortable, not as comfortable as the, um, as the Tesla front seat, but still pretty good. But look at the size of this, this key fob. I, and it's got like five, diff four different things that you can do on this side and then four more over here. Um, why don't you just have it on your phone? And when you come in, it unlocks and it gets ready for you. I had a heck of a time trying to figure out how to lock this thing because I keep forgetting that, oh yeah, there's a push button. And I absolutely hate these. There's, this is a remnant from the past that needs to go. But when you push it here, all of a sudden everything starts moving to where I left it, which is kind of a good idea. I, I like that part. What I, I really liked, as far as controls and whatnot is concerned, is these paddles right here. So what this does is it increases, if I press that paddle, it increases to max. So that's, that's giving me how much, how much regen am I getting? If I press this pedal, it drops the amount of regen. And so consequently, you're getting closer and closer to no regeneration. And some people are like that. That's not me. I like as much one pedal driving as I can get. The thing I do not, and by the way, I love the interior. This interior is really well done. Unfortunately, it's spoiled by all of these gizmachis that they've got on here. I've got one, two, three, four, 
five, six, six buttons over here, plus the paddle and plus the, uh, whatever this is called, drive mode. Um, I like the boost. I didn't get a chance to really get a chance to use it as much as I would have liked to, but I think that this is going to drop me into sport mode when I've got some moron in front of me that doesn't want to move quickly. I like that. This could go away. I think the steering wheel would look a lot better if you had just that going on. The other thing too is the dial here. Okay, I can use the dial, but why don't I just use my finger to move it? So everything has a double dip as it were. This is the radio controls. I couldn't figure out how to do it. I kept trying to find it on the map, but, but at the end of the day, I, I mean, really and truly, what, what you want to do is make it so that it's intuitive to the customer and make it so that, hey, um, uh, I don't need to see this because it's right there. I don't need to have this because it's right here. It's right there. I mean, we really need to start looking at how, how many things do we need and, and, and the reason for that is real simple. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So we've got about 60 bucks worth of stuff right here that I don't need or want. And then if we look over here and we look over there, you're well over 100. Okay, now that's at the cost point, but the consumer um, is gonna add a zero somewhere in there because there's you gotta make money on these things. So now you're looking at about 600 bucks. When I'm looking at all over the place here, I'm, I'm looking at about six or maybe even more than that, $100 uh, for buttons I don't need or want. And they don't, there's no appeal to this as far as the average, like uh, certainly not for me. I don't, I don't want these buttons and I'm old, um, but I do like that. And if this was like this, I'd keep that. And I do like these buttons here, or these paddles here. But then you start looking and you go, oh my God, look at all the stuff on the steering wheel. And now if we took that stock off and we put the turn signals here and we got rid of that, I mean, these are, these are things that are remnants from the past. They should go away and in favor of just getting the job done. Now I know, um, I, I can't remember how I did it before. It was up here somewhere, but uh, here it is right here, this button, Maybe you keep one button. Maybe like Tesla has a little wheel and you can get volume in a button. This is for talking. And you can press this and I can turn on the windshield wipers. And I can, I can do all kinds of things. So that means that this button I can talk to and it gives me everything that's up there probably. I never got a chance to try everything because I only had it for a short period of time um, yesterday and last night. But I mean, Apart from the fact that I don't like all the clutter on here, this is a nice car. I, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm really impressed. I can remember when uh, Kia, when uh, Genesis was first started and it had an awful lot of problems. Uh, but now um, they are definitely a force to be reckoned with in the EV world. And now that we're, uh, uh, for those who are counting, we're at about 19% a worldwide implementation of electric vehicles, uh, these guys are gonna do remarkably well. And I feel sorry for those who are still sitting there uh, behind the times. By the way, I will tell you, driving this is a breeze. I mean it sincerely. I absolutely adored the uh, driving characteristics. I took this down a washboard road. I have a, I have a uh, dirt road that's near us and I took it down that and I was really impressed and happy with the way that the, uh, the car sucked up the, uh, uh, the vibration and whatnot. It, um, it's, it's a very nice car, but for 70,000, 60, 70,000, I guess it's, <laughs> you're kind of expecting that kind of stuff. Anyways, my recommendation on this is pretty high, um, except I, I, I just, I don't want to see all the clutter. I'd get rid of that. So Genesis, good job. Thank you so much.